and what will it be this time? So we broke the little golden book streak. Ah, oh, but here it starts again. Oh. The big brown bear. Okay. Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. As you saw from the video, assuming I approved it, we are looking at another golden book, The Big Brown Bear by Georges Dupliax. Pictures by Gustav Tengren. Oh, a little bit about the author and artist. Hmm. Georges Duplex has written such favorite children's books as Gaston and Josephine, Topsy Turvy Circus, and The Merry Shipwreck. None of which I remember reading. Hmm. I wonder if Gaston uses antlers in all of his decorating. <sighs> Gustav Tengren's children's book illustrations have been published in almost every country of the world. Among the books he has illustrated are The Saggy Baggy Elephant, The Shy Little Kitten, and The Pokey Little Puppy, all of which I remember reading. <laughs> and when you said Pokey Little Puppy, my brain went Pokemon? No. And the art is so soft and fuzzy. Well, it's a story about a bear. Once there was a big brown bear who lived with his wife inside a cave. Please, dear, she said to him one day, run down to the brook and catch some fish for dinner, but don't go near the beehive in that old dead tree. Remember what the bees did to you last time. Foreshadowing. Then the bear's wife lit the fire and took down her frying pan. The way it's drawn, it doesn't look like she's saying, please, dear. <laughs> it's, it's, it looks more like, get off your lazy tail, go down to the river, and get some food. And he's doing the, no, I don't wanna. Yeah, classic sleepy, tired pose. With the pipe in his mouth. So we know this is old because you don't get to have pipes anymore in children's books for the most part. Jumping backwards real quick. Eighth printing in 1976. Original copyright 1944. Hmm. And here we go. The big brown bear walks slowly toward the brook. Before he knew it, he was at the old dead tree. Is this like an allegory for, like, go out and work and don't go to the bar? A lot. As soon as he reached the tree, he pushed his paw into the hive and grabbed a piece of honeycomb. Inside, the busy bees were making wax and honey. But the minute they saw that big paw wrecking their home and stealing their precious honey, they rushed out. Look more like flies than bees. Well, they had to draw a lot of them. So I have a feeling it was mostly just, I'm just going to put wings. Also, that picture right there looks like he's already had the honey. And the page before, he already had his paw in the hive before they already told us that. He looks really silly right now because he like, has his paw and his big tongue and his other paw and his belly. The big brown bear pulled out his paw and ran away so fast that he left the bees far behind him. But alas... He caught his foot in the root of a tree and tumbled over and over and rolled down the hill into a thorn bush. Ouch. So I'm guessing the lesson is listen to your wife. <laughs> Oof. He is not a happy bear. Also, why are there still bees? If you let me read the text. Swarming after him in a big cloud, the bees were ready to zoom down on his head. So the poor bear had to act fast. Pulling and kicking and tugging, he tore himself loose at last, leaving a great deal of his fur in the bush. He had to find a place to hide. But where could it be? Didn't they say he left the bees behind? Yeah. Then he fell and got caught in the bush, giving the bees time to catch up. Ah. He ran toward the brook, jumped into the water, and hid there, with only his nose showing. Suddenly, the bees spotted him and swooped down, smack, onto his nose. Ouch! Ouch! he cried. He climbed out of the brook and ran into a grassy field. That looks less like smacking and more like landing, but I get the point. And so does he. Yeah. Lots of them. He hid in the tall grass, where the bees could not see him. His nose was sore and getting bigger and bigger. But there's Pokemon in the tall grass. <laughs> Be careful, kitties. <laughs> and he remembered he was supposed to catch some fish for dinner. 
Oy vey. Also, yeah, in each progressive picture, his nose is getting much of a honker. It's, it's huge. Back he went to the brook and quickly caught up a trout. Then he ran toward home, looking over his shoulder fearfully. <laughs> oh, the pictures are so silly. It's great. He was so happy to be home that he gave his wife a great big bear hug and kissed her on both ears. His wife was quite surprised by such a greeting and guessed right away that he had done something wrong. <laughs> Sounds about right. And as soon as she saw his nose, she knew what he had done. This is like, oh my god, it is such an allegory for, ugh. <laughs> mm-hmm, very much so. But for kids. Yep. Oh dear, she cried. Why did you go near those awful bees? The big brown bear had no excuse. He promised her that he would never, never go near the old dead tree again. His wife put a bandage on his nose and gave him the biggest piece of trout. But way deep inside, he wished he had some of that nice honey for dessert. Uh, final page is him looking like he's laughing with his nose wrapped in a bandage and a plate with the skeleton of the fish, which does not mean he got the biggest piece of trout. That makes it look like he got the whole trout. Yeah, this book is, it's like, I'm pretty sure I'm using the term correctly. It's definitely an allegory for the husband going out and getting drunk and coming home. And trying to cover it up and getting totally busted. Mm-hmm. Especially with the expressions at the beginning of the book on the wife. Wow, that is... I, it's a good way to, like, give a kid a different idea of why his dad's doing this and how his mom's reacting. Uh, seeing it in a different perspective where he actually hears... He, the child, hears the yeah. entire story. I realized I was like, I should use they mm -hmm. and them. Because probably all they see is the fighting of the mom telling the father, I told you not to do this. Also, I sent you to the store for milk. Where's the milk? Oh, I got this. That is a case of beer. Where is the milk? I gave you $5 specifically for the milk. And you came back with a case of beer. One, how did you manage that for $5? And two, where is my milk? I don't know how you just... Yeah, just straight there. But there are so many stories of being sent on a task and failing and getting busted for it. Mm. So, did you enjoy it? Yes, the do what you're told because there are reasons behind it. And we get to see why he shouldn't have done what his wife asked him not to do. Showing that there's a reason behind the don't do this. I also like to point out again, the art was really fun. And I really get the cover of the book now. He has a trout and he's running like mad and he's surrounded by what are presumably bees. He just looks so silly in this. Also so soft and fuzzy, I just want to touch him. Probably not the best idea, because those claws are well illustrated in every single page. Oh yeah, the, the bears are well illustrated. They're not anatomically correct, but... They're anthropomorphic. So they are correct for being anthropomorphic. She's definitely also wearing that classic outfit from that era. The shirt and skirt with the scarf and apron going over it. And just to drive it all home, she's carrying her knitting in one paw. Mm. And she's doing the laundry when he comes home. I still think it's a cute story. and I would still, like, read this to a kid. It's fun. This has been The Big Brown Bear by George's Dupliex. Pictures by Gustav Tengren. Thanks again for listening.